Hello, Sydney. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nightmare Culture. In this episode, I'm going to discuss my top three asymmetrical horror games, and I'm going to rank them from three to number one. Now, choosing where they place in the ranking, I kind of did it by categories of gameplay, characters, map design, and difficulty levels. Now, each game is going to have their negatives, and I'll discuss a little bit on that but I am not wanting to discuss all the negatives such as technical issues and balancing issues because let's be honest, every asymmetrical horror game is riddled with that. So I'm not going to fault these games for the mistakes that they're already going to have. And before I get started on the list, the biggest thing I got to state is this is just my opinion because I'm going to start the list with probably a very unpopular opinion. So remember, this is just how I feel. You may feel a completely different way, and one of your games may not even be on this list. And if you want to tell me your list, do that in the comments below. So starting the list off at number three, like I said, will probably be an unpopular opinion, is Dead by Daylight. So I want to talk about the categories on how I rank these games, starting off with gameplay. Dead by Daylight's gameplay is a lot of fun, simple, and somewhat unique. One player becomes the killer while the other four play as survivors. The killer's goal is to hunt down and eliminate the survivors, duh. Survivors must work together to repair generators and escape the map. Very simple, that's it. The survivor's perspective is a third person point of view, giving them the better situational awareness. And you have to be stealthy while trying to repair generators, avoid the killer, and of course rescue your teammates that get hooked. There are technically two ways to escape. There's the escape gates and the hatch. Then you have the killer. The killer's perspective is a first person point of view, unless you're Chucky. And is focused of course on just killing survivors. I wouldn't say killing really, but mainly hunting them down. And of course, putting them on the hook to make them a sacrifice to the other wardly entity. I'm not too familiar with all the lore, so I won't get into that. That is the gameplay in a nutshell. The next category I want to discuss is characters. The characters in Dead by Daylight is endless. There's over 30 survivors and I believe over 30 killers. This makes Dead by Daylight the largest roster on any asymmetrical horror game, which is pretty exciting and why I still love this game. They're constantly coming out with new DLC giving us new killers all the time. Whether it's Alien, Ghostface, Resident Evil, now Chucky, they have a killer from almost every horror franchise or even video game franchise. I really think that's what makes Dead by Daylight so exciting and of course what's kept its longevity. Now I want to discuss map design. To me, the map designs are kind of lackluster and I think that's what puts it in its third place. They all feel the same. They just feel a little bland and just sometimes have a fresh coat of paint on them to make them look like they're from a certain franchise. I will state that the new Alien map was probably the most unique out of Dead by Daylight, but I just feel like they all feel the same. Again, my opinion. And then the last category that I use to rank these is difficulty. This to me is easy. Dead by Daylight is simple. You fix a generator, you escape. And I think that's what makes it a positive for most gamers because even if you're a casual gamer, it's easy to pick up and play. Again, I think that's what adds to its longevity. Now, the reason why it's in third place for me, I already stated was the map design, but also one of my biggest negatives is the fact that the variety of it hasn't changed. You still do the same thing. You fix your generators and you escape. After a while, the repetitiveness of it can start to become very lackluster. Again, I get why behavior does this, because what ain't broke, don't fix, but I think you can evolve it. Now let's discuss what game made the number two spot. This one's going to be a little bit of a shocker because there's so many great games out there, but for me, it is Evil Dead the game. Now I know this game was riddled with tons of technical issues, but like I said, I really want to throw that out the window because what asymmetrical game isn't? Evil Dead is a great franchise. It's kind of a campy, goofy horror franchise that has a pretty strong cult following. So let's first discuss the gameplay. Evil Dead, the game, is an asymmetrical horror game, of course, but players get to choose to either be survivors or demons. 
that can be controlled by AI or another player. I think that's a huge bonus for me in a game is the fact that you can play it cooperative gameplay or player versus player gameplay. A lot of other asymmetrical horror games don't have that. In the survivor perspective, you're a third person point of view. Your objective as the survivors is to work together to achieve objectives, such as repairing the cursed objects or finding a way to escape. You obviously have resource management, which is maintain your health, your stamina, your items, your weapons. And of course, you got to avoid demons. The demons role is a first person point of view perspective, and you got to hunt the survivors. Pretty self-explanatory. Each demon has unique abilities, such as summoning undead, using dark magic, or wielding iconic weapons from the franchise. I think what's the real selling point for the gameplay of Evil Dead is the fact that you can fight back, and that's kind of the objective. It almost feels very squad-based as a team. You have all types of weapons. You have a melee weapon and a long-range or short-range weapon, and it's vital to make sure you have the best weapon in order to survive or end the game. And I think that's what I love about this game also is its attention to detail. You have to literally find pages from the book, just like the film, in order to get the dagger, again, just like the film, in order to kill the main demon. So for any Evil Dead fan, this game is spot on. When it comes to characters, there's a ton to choose from, each from the Evil Dead series, from Evil Dead 1, 2, Army of Darkness, and of course the TV series, Ash vs. Evil. Now when it comes to the next category, which is just the characters, there are tons of them. There's Ash Williams from every single film. You have Ash Williams from Army of Darkness, from the TV series, you even have Lord Arthur, you have Maxwell, Henry the Red, my personal favorite, Ash Williams from Evil Dead 2, the list goes on. Again, that goes back to attention for detail. When it comes to the next category, which is maps or map design, I enjoy the maps on Evil Dead. They're large maps, means tons of walking, but you also have vehicles. And they have the no-buy cabin, which is nearly a one-for-one -one replica, which is incredible to have in the game. So I enjoy all the map designs. When it comes to difficulty, that one's a little tough because it kind of just depends on who you are and who you've been when the game has been released and through its ups and downs because there for a moment it was extremely easy to be a survivor and really hard to be a demon and then the roles got reversed and now I feel like the balancing is pretty well in the middle like I can go about five rounds and I will probably win three to four or two to three so I think it's very balanced as of now so now I'll discuss any negatives and why it's in the number two spot if I have some I think really for me my only negative for Evil Dead is the games are extremely long sometimes they are so long it can feel like I'm playing a destiny raid for me at my age I just don't always have time for how long the games are but I still enjoy this game so much before I get on to my number one asymmetrical horror game I'm going to discuss a few honorable mentions my first honorable mention is last year the nightmare that game was close to making the list no it really wasn't Last year, The Nightmare was riddled with tons of technical issues, balancing issues, lack of content, so many negatives to the game. But if you kind of strip it of those parts, it did have a lot of fun gameplay. And to me, it was a unique asymmetrical horror game. And unfortunately, Elastic Games kind of folded, but you can still play the game on Steam. It's just now just called Last Year. My next and last honorable mention that almost made this list, and I swear the only reason why it didn't is because it's so new, is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is a great asymmetrical horror game, but because it's brand new, there's not a lot to it yet. The more they update it, the more stuff that comes, I think it'll eventually grow to be one of my favorite asymmetrical horror games, and I may have to redo this entire list. But now, we go on to number one. The best asymmetrical horror game in my eyes is Friday 13th, The Game. Now, I'm extremely biased. I love Jason Voorhees. I grew up watching the films. So, of course, The Game is going to be my number one. I'll go right into the categories, which is gameplay. The game puts seven players as camp counselors against one player who embodies the infamous killer Jason Voorhees. Counselors must escape or survive while Jason obviously hunts them down and kills them. The counselor's perspective is a third person point of view. You play as a counselor navigating the entire Camp Crystal Lake. Your objectives are repair generators, 
find items, and of course work together to survive. What I like about this is there's so many other things to do. It's fill up the car with gas, put the battery in, find the keys, call the cops, make sure you call Tommy Jarvis. There was a lot to this game. So your escape routes felt kind of endless. Jason's role was great. It was also a third person point of view. He had unique abilities or almost special abilities. He had teleportation, enhanced senses, and of course some epic brutal finishes or brutal kills. Again, another game that paid so much attention to detail. You could stalk and ambush your victims just like in the movies. Every map was taken straight from the films. You had Pakanok Lodge, of course you had Crystal Lake. It was just incredible the details that went into the game. Also when it came to gameplay, you could kill Jason in a very unique way just like the film and you really had to work as a team in order to do it. You had to first find Jason's cabin get a female to put on the sweater, make sure Tommy Jarvis was in. There was a list of things you had to do, but it made it so enticing and fun and almost a reward when you finally did it. So let's get into characters. Obviously, there was a variety of characters. They have Jasons from all over, part two, part seven, part eight. I don't want to keep going, but I could. A Jason from every Friday 13th film, almost. And when it came to survivors, you had a ton that were kind of taken straight from the film, some that were made up. It was a lot of fun, especially when you get the character Shelly. He was one of my favorites to use. Now, when it comes to map design, I kind of already went on that. The tension and detail was spot on. The maps were perfect. It was like you were jumping into the world of Friday 13th. When it comes to difficulty, I think Friday 13th borderline a perfect level of it. I didn't find too many balancing issues and I started playing the game from the beta all the way till it's dying days and there really was no balancing issues. I thought the game was pretty medium difficult level. It wasn't super easy to escape at the beginning but it, as you progressed and got better at it, it became easier and of course being Jason was a lot of fun and wasn't too difficult because of all the special abilities you had. So. My one negative for the game, if there is one, the only negative I have for Friday 13th is the legal issues. It ruined the game. We had so much content, the roadmap. We were looking forward for this game to last for many years. And of course, finally take the crown from Dead by Daylight for its longevity. Legal issues stop that, which is kind of sad. So that's it. That is my top three asymmetrical horror games, ranking them from third place all the way to first place. My question for you is, What's your list? Let me know your top three in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.